This is Danny Flexen here for Seconds Out. Delighted to be joined by Shane Watson of SJM Boxing. Shane, how you doing, mate? Uh, I mean, I've had a better few days. Um, finally getting a bit better sleep now. Um, I slept for about 11 hours last night, so yeah, that was quite good. But uh, um, yeah, no, nah, yeah, it's been a hard few days, but you know, I feel like after events like that, it kind of builds your character and tests you a little bit. I mean, I've never been in a, in a situation like that before, so. Um, so yeah, it's quite new to me, but uh, but yeah, I'm really excited and recharged to go again now. Yeah, it must be particularly difficult for you. We're talking, of course, about Joe Joyce's uh defeat to Gilet Zhang on Saturday night at the Copper Box because Joe's not just one of a roster of S Jam fighters for you. You guys are very close, you've spent a lot of time together, training camps, and, and as friends as well. How was it for you when it actually unfolded on Saturday? It must have been tough. Well, my first and instant reaction was just to make sure Joe was okay. I mean, we've seen eye injuries like this before in boxing, and just as from a fan, I remember what happened with Kel Brook and um, I'm trying to think of other fighters. This happened to now. My mind's kind of, kind of gone blank, but, but yeah, just even Kel Brook, for example. Um, and you know, sometimes when you just from the outside, the, oh, Billy Joe Saunders was the other one, wasn't he? But um, just from the outside, um. Sometimes when an eye looks that way, it could be a career injury or worse, you know, even worse than that. So you, you just instant reaction is to make sure Joe's okay. Um, and when we got the all clear, me and Adam went to hospital with him um, until the early hours of the morning to make sure he's okay. And we got the all clear on that, which is brilliant. It's first and foremost the most important thing. And then when I got back to the hotel that night, just thinking about, what went wrong, what we could do to improve, was there any more we could have done in the training camp? Um, you know, did we take Zhang serious enough? All these questions were in my head. And then I started to work towards that because I was thinking at the time, and I still think it now, that the most important thing is to get the rematch on. We worked so hard to get Joe to WBO into him, say yes. Um, and Joe himself worked very hard to obviously get himself to WBO into him say this. And if we're being honest, no one's going to give Joe Jewish a shot unless, even after the other night, unless he forces it. Now, defeat is defeat. And at the end of the day, Zillow's then won the fight. I'm not going to take any credit away from him because he's been an absolute diamond all week. And so is his team. He's got, a nice, he's got some of the nicest people part of his team. And he's a really nice man himself. But it's even harder to accept defeat in the way that defeat happened. Because if you get out box all night and beaten fair and square, and he did win fair and square, so I'm not saying he didn't, because he did win fair and square, but you can accept it in yourself probably a little bit better. You can say, you know what, we simply just wasn't good enough. But the reality is, Joe was starting to come on a bit strong in the fight, which is, it was a typical almost Joe Joyce fight in a way, really, just without the eye injury that we don't usually get. And he wasn't, it, it, people are trying, I'm actually people making comments and saying stuff online, Joe wasn't hurt in the fight at all. If you actually watch in the second round when he got caught with the two shots that people were referring to, Joe stood and started to punch back and then Zhang pushed him. And that's when he went, but as Joe was turning, he got pushed. And that's when Joe went into towards the turnbuckle. And that's when Howard Foster said to break because he pushed him in terms of, when people were saying, why did Howard Foster break it? You're not allowed to, push people in the ring right? as simple as that that's when Dylan White made a big fuss about Fury pushing him and stuff like that yeah. whether that's the reason why Dylan White lost is obviously not but it's still illegal to push people like, and people seem to forget that but um, but Joe wasn't I'm telling you because I was with him in the dressing room after and he was talking and he was completely fine and normal he just had a massive swell of eye which obviously in that case he isn't fine but um, but uh, but yeah he wasn't hurt the, the juggernaut's Chin still exists. Uh, he's he showed incredible resilience and toughness, and it was just a bad day at the office. It was, he had he had his worst day at the office since I had his best, and that's and that's that's literally what it's come down to. And he still would have won at his worst day if the eye wasn't a problem. But obviously, the eye was a major problem, and the doctor and referee made the right decision. Yeah, I mean it's a tough one. In the I can see the narrative that perhaps Joe would have uh, come back into the fight. It seemed like Zhang was starting to fade, certainly from my view. Um, 
But it becomes a race against time when the eyes swelling shut. It got the first doctor's inspection, um, said the right amount of fingers, I believe, when they were held up and was allowed to carry on. But the second time wasn't able to do that. How, what should, I know it's still early in the post-mortem process, if you like, but what should Joe have done differently to avoid that scenario? I think there are many things. I think there are many factors. I mean, the problem is, Danny, I'm not a strength and conditioning coach, right? Sure. Uh, me, me and Adam have a small conversation, a couple of small conversations since the fight. And like what we can do and what we can advise on, more so than anything, because what we know and understand is boxing there. Yeah? So it's boxing matters and things like that. And, um, but what weight and size someone should come in that, into the ring is something that's completely somebody else's job and completely their ex- expertise as well but like, it's very hard to argue with snc coaches or things like that when that's what they do do you know what i mean it's like for, for example me telling a trainer how to hold pads and things like that how could i ever possibly do it like with a straight face you know what i mean <laughs> I, could, I just couldn't do it could i so it's it's difficult it obviously in hindsight do you know what the problem is everyone has their opinions and says stuff before the fight when the fight's finished, now everyone's changed. It's like before, like some of the people's comments I've seen online, I, I can take criticism because you know what, I was quite loud on fight week because I felt like we needed to be. When 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 Joe Joyce's name's getting overlooked and you got and you had people like Tyson Fury making every excuse to not fight him after promising he would, and you, you see AJ's comments saying how oh, you want to fight Joe Joyce and then I'm saying fight till December. I think that this this is what I mean. Like, so you have to be loud and stand by your man because I'm proud of him and I still am and. And we work so hard to get to where we are. And a lot of people, if we're being honest, are just talking about rubbish. And this thing was that. And um, when things like that happen, obviously, afterwards, you have to like reevaluate and and see where we go. But but um, but yeah, I, I, like everyone's quick to make comments afterwards because before everyone's like, "Oh, I respect Joe Joyce. He he fights anyone and everyone. That's what we need. The heavyweights, a heavyweight that comes back and fights everyone." Um, he's the best in the world. He can beat these guys. Then we lose to an eye injury, which is what it was. We still lost the fight fair and square, but we lost to an eye injury. But he wasn't hurt. He wasn't buzzed, you know. And he was getting back into the fight. And then everyone's right, written him off now. At the end of the day, we believe Joe Joyce number one in the world. We still believe Joe Joyce number one in the world. In Joe's next fight, it will show you he's number one in the world again. A freak injury happened in the ring. He got caught some unbelievable shots by Zhang. Credit to him. Great game plan put together by him and his team. They backed themselves and they believed themselves. And, and, and in the end, they got the job done. So absolute credit to them. But do you know what? These kind of defeats test your character and test the person who you are. And do you know what? Thankfully, Joe's really responded well since his first defeat. And we're going to come back a lot stronger. But some of these clowns on, that are doing interviews and saying stuff in social media don't have a clue why would you comment so much on something when you have not been there in training camp you haven't even spoken to joe himself or anything but yet you've got a f- f- 1100 opinions how could you possibly have one joe shouldn't have been fighting zang his team don't know what it mate do you understand how things work with the wbo you go to the wbo and ask them how many of opponents turned down the fight in the wbo and it had to be a wbo interim title defense it had to be someone in the top 15 Go and ask them. Everyone was turning the fight down. Typical for Joyce. And and let's be, let's get this right. Let's get this real. If we believe Joe beats Fury, and we still believe that, if we still believe Joe beats the knocks out AJ, which we still believe, we will be beating people like Zilazang, yeah? So people need to get that clear and get that in their heads. And Joe will absolutely demolish him when we take up that rematch. Now, I understand what you're saying about the weight. One of the criticisms a lot of people had, and, and including me when I, I wrote my report on the fight, was that it didn't look like Joe knew particularly how to deal with a southpaw, certainly a, a gifted southpaw like Zhang. Can you reassure people, having spent time in the training camp, that he did prepare for a southpaw, he got plenty of southpaw sparring, all the sort of stuff people were kind of saying and speculating on social media? Do you know what? Like, and this is another thing, right, yeah? Like... I don't know how amateur people think these camps are. Do you think do people think we're preparing for an elite level elite level Southpaw, Olympic silver medalist, world championship medalist, whatnot, and bought and, and sparred Orthodox the whole camp? 
<laughs> like these people, like they're just so delusional and crazy. We were sparring southpaws, obviously, the whole camp, three days a week for, I can't remember this, how long it was, maybe seven, eight weeks, whatever long it was, which is like normal. Like, and it just didn't go well on the night. Yeah, it might look like not, I've never seen a southpaw before. Like, I said Carl Frampton's comments and other people, maybe it did. It was just the worst possible night at the office. And then he was starting to come on track. It wasn't, listen, I get the first two rounds, three rounds, it was maybe getting scored a bit. I get it, right? And I could see that, yeah. But it wasn't like Joe wasn't having any success at all. These people acting like he got battered from pillar to post from round one to when the fight ended. And it's not the case. Like, it was... The, the, the difference in this fight compared to Takam was is that Takam isn't a devastating puncher. That's just mm. a fact, right? And then Joe Watt got the equaliser and knocked him out, right? And came in the fight late, as he always does. But the only difference is that Zhang's a, a, obviously a by far bigger puncher and had the damage left on his eye. And um, and then Joe was still coming on strong. Zhang was blowing. And then Joe was starting to push Zhang back as well. Like, was the weight an issue? This is something we still need to all discuss and evaluate. I haven't, we haven't had a full and formal meeting about that yet. And I think that's what's needed because it's an I, I know Joe, but I don't live inside of his body. So he'll know his body better than anybody does. But that's something we need to discuss. We need to discuss that with his SNC coach. Um, but who knows? We're all conspiracy theorists at the end of the day. Only one man will know himself, and that's him himself. So, but one thing we do definitely know is that Joe will knock out Zhang and beat him devastatingly the next time they fight. Because if that was Joe at his worst, and he still would have gone on to win that fight, and I'm just being realistic, he would have. Joe at his best will absolutely blitz Zhang next time. So, and I and I like Zhang a lot, and I've utmost credit for him. Do you know what? It shocked me in a lot of ways as well. Um, utmost credit for him and I, you know what it, it kills me and it hurts me but I'm happy for him and I'm happy for his team because it reminded me of when it reminded me of when we beat Parker that that that, that feeling gives you in your body and it's the best it's the best feeling in the world and and we felt how Parker would have felt at the end of uh, his fight so and it's it's a bit of a reality check I guess but um, but I'm excited to see Joe again I'm excited to get back to the gym and work hard with him and I'm excited to eventually get the rematch on. And having uh, been in most of his camp for this fight, were there any sort of uh, warning signs that he'd struggle to deal with that southpaw left hand? That that was what caused the damage, of course, on Saturday night. Or were you pretty confident going in that he'd, he'd kind of mastered that side of the, the strategy? Uh, I mean, at the start of camp, I mean, it's not going to be easy to into a southpaw when you haven't fought one in over four years. I mean, it's, mm. it's like... It's a bit of muscle memory, isn't it? It takes you a while to get back and get used to it and pick up maybe old tricks and things like that. After the first couple of weeks, he was bang on. Um, I mean, even ask his sparring partners, Charles, Prince Charles Martin, um, Zach Spiller. Like we, we had some good sparring, man. Um, he was fine. It just happened to be that anything that could have gone wrong in the night went wrong. And that was it. The eye got closed out. The eye injury happened in the second round. So when that happens in the second round, it doesn't give you much to really work from moving forward. You know, if that and then you're going to get hit round, more as well, aren't you? Because you can't see the punches coming as well as previously. Exactly, you're getting hit more, and now he's panicking, thinking the fight's going to get stopped, which now it instantly means he's getting hit more because he's just trying to press. He's trying to press and, and get the stoppage, and he's getting countered with the same shot. And it's just honestly, it's just a complete nightmare that happened, and everything went wrong, and still. I know Joe would have won that fight if the injury didn't happen. And it's all good saying if, if the injury did happen. So what's the point of even talking about it? And and Zhang won fair and square and Zhang won in a good fight. So credit to him, but it just pisses me off. Listen, I can accept criticism myself because maybe from a fan's perspective, I deserve it, whatever. But I can take that. That's fine. But to give Joe criticism after the great nights he's given everybody, the fact that he even went in there and fought with Zhang when you've got certain other people fighting basically cruiserweight American heavyweights and whatnot, and getting credit for it for whatever reason. Um, and other guys who are fighting in six rounders, but ex Olympians and things like that, give this man credit. Give him credit. He was the one that, when no one else was fighting anyone, which they're not, which look at how it is, nobody is fighting anyone. He's still going in there and fighting these guys, devastating punches, knowing that they're, they're coming with a real friend. They're going to at least be a very fun fight for the fans and things like that. But yet now you want to criticize him. You either want good fights here and you're going to give everyone else shit for not taking them. 
But now you're gonna give now you're gonna give someone shit that didn't work out on the night for him because you got an eye injury. What way? What one do you want them? What way do you want to have it? Do you want to just do you want Joe just to fight Christian Hammer again, and and many other and many other heavyweights that he could have just fought and said and protect his WBO status? But no, he wanted to lay it on the line for everybody, and get paid well for doing so. This is what I'm saying again. All these idiots online, and supposed to be pro pro heavyweight boxers that know their stuff, coming out of comments they have no idea about, absolute no idea about, and it, it's a shame that people are like this. But at the end of the day, his team know what we can do better. He knows what we can do better, and we're going to come back strong. And when he does get the, when he does win the rematch, then I'd like to see what the people that had those comments say before come back to me. So. One more question on Saturday night before we move on. Um, it seemed watching on TV that there was a different person taking the lead in the instructions to Joe each round. Uh, I think Jimmy Tibbs at one point, uh, Steve Brown towards the end, Salas at different times as well. Is that a usual thing for a Joe Joyce fight? No, it is not. I mean, it's probably an element of panic, I'd imagine. Whether it's the right thing or the wrong thing to do. Again, this is what we need to evaluate as a team. Um, which I hope you were doing it next week. I want to let Joe have a bit of his own time now and relax a little bit. Um, because he has been seeing me every day for the past three and a half months. And for <laughs> anyone, that's probably my most pleasant experience. So um I think he could probably give a little break from seeing my face. But um but uh but yeah, no, obviously that's not not the way things should be done. Um, because obviously that's very confusing. Three different three different people talking, three different sets of instructions, but even more so in a very difficult situation. But there's probably an element of panic. Maybe the other ones felt like the words weren't getting around clear enough. Or not. Is this something we need to evaluate still? Again, it wouldn't have stopped the iron, though, would it? You know, like we can all we can all we can all say this could have been a bit different, that can be a bit different, but it wouldn't have changed the outcome of his eye been stopped. It would have been different if we lost a close point decision or something like that. Then you'd be like, oh that's a very that could have been a very pivotal thing in the fight. But but that's not the case. Um but I'm just to you know what I'm just relieved almost that I know that we can turn this around and that thanks to Adam uh and the team and Frank Warren that they put the rematch clause in the contract because believe me Zan wouldn't be given Joe a rematch. As nice as guys is He's a lovely man and his team are very nice guys. But I know that they wouldn't have given us a rematch. And why would you? Bloody hell, if I was Zang, I wouldn't give Joe a rematch either. But back then now they have to. And there's, listen, there's some interesting... It could be in some very interesting places. So let's see how this all develops and how it all turns out. But I'm really excited about it. And do you know what? Like this, I was worried about how I was kind of going to respond to this because, honestly, when I tell you that I put everything into this man, like everything. Like right? I've sacrificed time with my own family, friends, and everything, and it, it, it hurts. But and Joe's obviously done way more than that. So obviously he'll be he'll be he'll be killing inside right now. Joe will be, and that's a good thing because that's going to bring him back and make him stronger and better than ever. And it's a bit of a reality check for everybody as well. So, um, but but the, 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 at the end of the day, the chin's there. The typical juggernaut self is there. He got an eye injury. Anyone else that got hit with those shots, their skull would have been smashed to pieces. I'm just being true. He is, Zhang is arguably the second biggest puncher in that division. Yeah. Definitely top three, to say the least, anyway. And Joe took some of those shots flush as you can get. And all he had was swelling on the eye. That's all he had. No, no fracture, no broken bones, no hairline fractures, nothing. The swelling much as it looked like it was worse. I thought it was when it happened, but no, it wasn't. Um, which is why I was actually almost a little bit relieved as well as feeling sick that the doctor stopped it because just in case it could have been worse. But but luckily, no, he's all good. It's just swelling. And um, I just can't wait to get the rematch on and to hand the business the way it should be handled. Now, a rough estimate, you've uttered the word rematch about 500 times in the last 15 minutes. So <laughs> Joe's decision ultimately... But when will you be advising him that he should take the rematch immediately or have a fight in the interim? What what would you like to see? Look, the, the problem is we haven't done it, right? So, in an ideal world, in an ideal world, you, you would have a, a fight in between, probably with another southpaw, mm. and and get and get Joe ready in that way. But 
you know you, these things you have to be careful how you how you how you do these things because as much as you have a rematch the reason why we want to rematch then well, that's the only reason why we would rematch that. Well, no, not the only reason. Joe would want to avenge your defeat anyway. He would want to avenge your defeat, of course. But also on top of that, he's got the WBO interim title, right? If he loses that strap by fighting, I don't know, if he lost it in a fighting through, by the way, I'm not even saying he would lose, but let's say he, he, he did and whatnot, then then we've kind of lost everything we've worked for, for since Joe, being in Joe's career, most importantly, Joe's work for. So do we have time to get a fight in the middle? Maybe, maybe, maybe we do. But it's just, again, this is something that we have to sit down and discuss. This is something that Adam has to work out with the, with Warrens and stuff like that. Um, but the, the reason why I'm keen on having the rematch immediately is because I know Joe can do a real job on Zang. We get him 100%, which we will do. We will do. There's a lot of... We made the mistakes all in there. They were all the mistakes we could have possibly made and they all happened. So we know we can rectify them. We can get him better. We can get him stronger. Maybe get him bigger and destroy Zang. Like I said, he was coming into the fight. He was going to win the fight anyway. He had an iron injury and that's what happened. But it wasn't like... I said we got battered from pillar to post and Joe got ironed out out cold. And there would be some real discussions on how we move forward here and how... We get Joe ready for a rematch, whether that's an interim, a fine middle, or whatever. But I don't know, that's just my opinion. But I probably still need more time to think about it. I still need more time to discuss and evaluate. Listen, I don't talk for Joe, Joe Joyce. He's his own man. He's got his own opinions. He's got his own thoughts. I just think we will need to take the rematch sooner rather than later. But but uh, whether that means we have a fight in between or not, we'll find out and we'll see and we'll talk and evaluate. But, but, the good thing is Joe was keen for the rematch. He made that very clear. Um, I think well, you put something out on social media yesterday, underlining the fact that he believed he'd beat Zang in a rematch, things like that. Um, so yeah, we just need to discuss. But but yeah, Joe will be back strong, and I'm 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 hundred percent sure he'll be interim champion again. And on the kind of contractual side, if Joe does want it immediately, does Zang have no choice? Like, does he have to fight him next if if that's what Joe wants? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He has to fight him next, and I believe that the yeah he has to fight. He has to fight him next. I was going to say something else about it, but I realised I probably shouldn't actually. But yeah, um, but yeah, no, um, I don't want to leave Zam having hot water. But but no, um, yeah, Adam Adam and the Warrens have put a very good contract in place to ensure that Joe can get a rematch with Zang. And you know what? Like, if you actually look at some of the, I've not really watched too many interviews just because. Most of it is just all pure hate, and uh, <laughs> I was already not feeling great about myself. So, but um, if you actually um, work online, these team that are saying how they're expecting Joe to rematch anyway. So obviously, as they would expect it. I mean, it, it's difficult as well. Like people were saying rebuild like Danny Dubois did. At the end of the day, right? Danny Dubois was a young man, and Joe is thirty-seven. Number two, like rebuild like Dubois did. That's fine if you got battered for ten rounds. And then your eye was so bad, like broken orbital bone, where you needed to do that. Joe was Joe won some rounds in that fight. Was coming on strong, was pushing Zhang back, and Zhang was blowing right. So that was a matter of three or four rounds after that fight, and Joe would have got the job done. But at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. It didn't happen. But this is what I'm saying. We don't need to rebuild Joe like Dubois was rebuilt. Joe's com- no Dubois' confidence. And everything about him, and he can still sit in his style today. It's been completely smashed by Joe. So I can understand why you would need to rebuild something like that. And also, he's very young. If you took an immediate, you couldn't have, there was no rematch, of course, with Joe either, as well. So they had no choice but to rebuild. So, and if there was a rematch, we, everyone would know what happened, it would have been worse. So, but this is a very different situation, a very different scenario. And moving on from Joe. Who's next out on the S Jam stable? Who who are you kind of gonna be with next? So it's actually a bit open really. Um the Rome will be out very soon. Um Florian Marku. Hopefully we'll have an announcement in the next week or so. Um we got Johnny Fisher have an announcement in the next week or so. John Hedges is out for a while, he's got a bad hand injury. So he'll be out until September time. Uh, Janaid will be out in the early summer. He's going to America actually with Dalton to do some um, 
get some really good American spelling in. So I help develop them and push them on a lot. So I can't wait to hear about that. Um, what else have we got? Um, obviously, we had the devastating defeat for Lisa Whiteside as well. So she's made the decision to not carry on anymore. So uh, all the best to Lisa. I'm excited to hear what she can do after. I really hope she can get like, a job at like, GB or something. Mm. She'll be really good for like the young girls coming through, not just girls, the guys as well. Like, she was one of Britain's best ever female amateurs. And she's such a lovely lady as well. And I really hope she stays in boxing in some kind of way. And I'll help her in any way that I can um, to keep her in boxing. Um, Soul Dakers, I'm expecting early summer as well. And you mentioned Johnny Fisher. Beginning. You, sorry, you mentioned Johnny Fisher there. Are we likely to see him on the June 10th matchroom card in London? <clears throat> um, I can't really say too much, but you know what? In the past, I've probably spoken too much and landed myself in trouble a lot of time because <laughs> okay. I don't think before I talk a lot of the time, um, <laughs> as people can probably tell. <laughs> so, um, yeah, no, but he'll have a fight announcement soon. He'll be fighting... He'll be fighting in the early summer as well. So, yeah, he, he will he will fight in that sort of scene. But I'll let his promoters uh, announce that for him. But, um, but yeah, he'll have another little step up in opponent. Um, so, yeah, that'd be, that'd be nice and interesting to see. Um, I'm trying to think. What else have we got announcements coming for? Tommy Fletcher. Hmm. He'll be out in the early summer as well, announcement pending. Um, Guido Vinello. Hmm. An exciting announcement um, uh, coming his way. So I'm excited to see Guido back as well. Um, so I really don't want to forget anybody. Uh, <laughs> I think that could be it. I think so. I think that's no it. one's jumping out on me that you've missed, but <laughs> sorry, I don't want to forget anyone either. So um, yeah, no, what... no, I'm sure that is it. I'm sure that is it. I mean. Yeah, no, I'm sure it is. I can't, we haven't got that many fires. I can't, I can't I should have forgotten one, really. Brilliant. Shane, really appreciate your time. Um, it's only going to get better from here. So, you know, take the downtime you need and, and then crack on. Because, yeah, you've done a great job with Joe, all of you. And uh, it's not over.